What up, what up, what up, what up? You already know it is. Your boy, Cuts by Garcy. Straight back to represent and what? Talk your barber shit. So, you already know what it is. I'm always hitting y'all with dope, dope conversations with amazing barbers. I can say now, like worldwide. So, it's, it's dope to have created this platform to share this platform with everyone, to have you come aboard, comment, share, like. Uh, I'm getting a lot of love from other barbers wanting to join join this platform. And I just want to say, hits me right here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative. I, I just had an idea and it's, you know, it's, it's growing. You know, you know, I planted a seed and and the tree is growing. So I just wanted to jump on here a little early. Um, West Coast time, all the way down to ATL. Another amazing barber out of Atlanta, Georgia, that's going to be coming on here and speaking that what? Talk your shit. Talk that barber shit. So we, we getting on it. We're going to get at it. But I just wanted to make sure everything was lined up correctly. Um, hope sound is clear. Hope visual is good. And yeah, we're going we gonna to do this. So, you know, I just want to let you guys know and say I appreciate everyone that's been tuning in to my gear. You know, that barber gear. Like I said, when after COVID, when COVID started and after COVID, I know, it was, you know, we have to wear the mask and, and we have to figure all this stuff out. How to really connect with our clientele, how to connect with new customers and, you know, I was like, man, I, I should create a hat where it just say barber so people could look at it and be like, damn, you a barber? Oh, I need a barber. I'm looking for a barber right now. So I just want to appreciate all my barbers that have been reaching out, grabbing these items. Um, you know, they call come in all different colorways. And, you know, I got my corduroy one on right now. So I appreciate everybody that's been reaching out, purchasing. And just hit me up in the DMs and I got you. But I see my boy on, and we about to jump right into it. So let me tag him in. I hear you. I, I hear the Yo. sound. Oh, there you go. <laughs> How you doing, man? Hello. Can you hear me clearly? I can. I can uh, hear you. You hear going me as loud. It's good. Mm hmm. Yeah. Let me make sure my. <clears throat> can you hear me good? I can hear you. I can hear you clear. I just can't see you as much. Good deal. I wonder why. What is going on with that? <laughs> no worry, man. Take your time. Take what, your, what is the problem? With, take your time. We'll get it right. What it, What is the problem, though? Um, it's kind of glitching, and it's kind. You kind of like real fuzzy. Interesting. All right, hold on. Okay, no worries. Let me see here. Is it fixed now? Uh, I, like I said, I can hear you. It just it just coming off a little fuzzy, but I, I I'm I'm ready to work with it if you if you okay with it. How how do I look on your end? Yeah, I mean I'm 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 fine. Okay. No, nah, you're good. That's why I'm like I don't know what the heck is going. On. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> hey, you know it, it it gets like that sometimes, but we gonna make it work. So I just want to say I yeah I was in the I was in the car man <laughs> I'm in the car because you know at my house it's a mad house man I got all my girls my six year olds she don't care nothing about no no quiet time <laughs> she she lit so I get I was like let me sit in the car right quick and uh and do this. I, I got you so. uh, I'll be, hopefully I'll be there soon I'll be going through the same thing but um, no doubt. I just want to say thank you, man. Um, it's an honor to have you on my platform. Uh, I've been doing this um, a little during the time when COVID first hit. 
And I really went with like a lot mm -hmm. of my classmates. And then once um, COVID went in full effect, it was ways for me to really connect with my classmates and see how they're doing and, you know, um, keep them, you know, mm -hmm. keep information going of, you know, what is going on with, you know, the barbering, uh, you know, the state board, you know, and then trying to, you know, connect with our professors and see if we can do online, you know, classes and stuff like that. So that's where talk barbership mm -hmm. really um, originated from. And then after that, I just got a chance to really branch it out a little bit further and have um, like people like yourself that have been in the industry for a, a, a while and, and have so much to share and have so much that they want to give back. And it has kept on escalating mm -hmm. and growing like that. So it's not mm -hmm. about like coming on here, like bashing the industry or bashing any other barbers. It's yeah, yeah, no, nah, nah, I ain't gonna do that. Yeah, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, so it's just basically coming up here and, and sharing knowledge and sharing information to, you know, barbers that are mm -hmm. starting off within a year or two or barbers that's just coming out of uh, out of school and, and want to really know how to do this industry the correct way, not just all about the persona that we see on social media of how, you know, we can glorify making a lot of money, but mm -hmm. also how we can take care of our family, how, how we can branch mm -hmm. off be, from behind the chair, how how we can really educate ourselves financially and and things like that. So to have you aboard means a lot to me for you to really take time of your day from your family, for whatever you're doing to really go get on here and talk your barber shit. So I, I, the floor is yours. I, I, I want to have you introduce yourself I want to mm -hmm. have you talk about your journey like what what was that day when you first clicked the yeah, I was about to say it was cut out uh, I'm sorry mm -hmm. can, can you hear me yeah, it's, it was cutting in and out it, it, it was cutting in and out okay it was cutting in and out so, well, the last part I was saying is that I, I can barely yours, hear the last the last yeah, <laughs> like I said, although, can you hear uh, me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. The last, part, the last part you were like, I'm sorry, heard was that I just thank you for being on here. So I was like, so if you, if you can hear me, then I'll go. Yeah, what I was about, what I was, what I was saying at the end, was, but I couldn't hear it. But I heard something about. I heard. Something Yeah, I think this one this one gonna be a little struggle for us today. Yeah. So the last yeah, the last part was that the floor is yours. Let me let me let me let me pull back in the garage right quick so I can connect to the wall. Okay, okay, no worries. Okay. okay. All, right. All right, so my name is Will Stam. I'm a barber in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been out here about fifteen years. Okay. Um, I, when I first started my barber journey, it was just, it, it, it came from just being broke. I was back home in Claymont, Delaware, and my grandmother bought me a pair of trimmers when I was 15 years old because I had a bunch of facial hair very early, and I couldn't afford to go to the barber shop weekly, and I didn't really care to go to the barber shop. She was taking me to the salon, like the little super cuts and stuff, just butchering my hair, and um, so she bought me a pair of trimmers for Christmas and told me you need to learn how to shave if you can go out the house with me. So, you know, just not really having the resources and not really having the money, I took the trimmers that I got for Christmas and started lining myself up. So basically from there, my friends took notice and were like, yo, who lined you up? Like, how did you go to the barbershop without me? And I was just like, I didn't. I was in the bathroom, like just playing around with these little Remington $10 from Walmart yeah. <laughs> about 18 years ago. So and that's how it got started for me. So since that day, uh, I went to barber school when I got out of high school at 18, and I left that area, the Philadelphia area, is where I went to. I went to Tri City Barber School in Philadelphia. Okay. When I I got out of that at 20, 21, just had turned 21. Two months after that, I just left my hometown and moved to Atlanta, Georgia, at 21. Nice. I got a job at you know I had my license, so I got it transferred over. Got a job at a shop downtown by Georgia State. And I worked there for two years, worked really hard all day, all night, pretty much. It was just me. And I got fired on my two-year anniversary. They kicked me out, threw my stuff in the trash bag, told me get the hell out of here. 
And in that moment, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to start my own shop. And uh, I did that. I started my own shop because I didn't want, you know, most shop owners and stuff like that. They'd be extorting the barbers and doing a bunch of random stuff and, you know, just kind of mistreating them. At least back then, you know, we got a lot better owners now, but I'm sure people can relate to that as, as I did. So I wanted to start a shop where I helped barbers and not just extorted them. So I started my first shop in Atlanta, Georgia, when I was 23 years old. I grew it to three locations, and now I'm opening up a school. So that's pretty much how it started in the beginning. Um, so that, that was pretty much how it all started. And I got tons of stories and journeys throughout that these last 13 years that they, they seem unreal even to me. So there, it, it's, it's been a journey for sure. No, I mean, that's, that's <clears throat> what it's about. To, uh, I want to tackle on two things that you said. Um, first off, the, like you said, the experience where you, from 18 to 23, you, 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 you gain so much experience of the do's and the nots of what you wanted to bring into your life as mm -hmm. a barber. So I, I guess the learning experience, what was more the major learning experience that you, you gained when you first started barber that, that made you say, okay, this is the road that I really want to go down instead of that road? What, what was that first impact experience? It actually came from the, it actually came from the first job I ever got, right? As a barber. Mm -hmm. I worked in a shop and they sat me in the front next to um, a guy by the name of Twain was his name, right? He was a barber. He was really good. He had all the clientele in my area where I'm from. And I used to be like, man, if I could just cut like you, man, I'll be good. You know, if I could just get like you, you know, I'll be straight. I won't need nothing else. And, you know, he was like, I thank you for the kind words, but he was like, let me tell you something. And I was like, yeah, what you got? He said, never judge a barber by their skill judge them by their clientele and I was like well, what does that mean and he was like I know tons of barbers that are me you want to be like me but I know tons of barbers that cut better than me that run circles around them with clientele and I was like got it I mean I was like I didn't really understand because I thought the barber best skills made the most money right. and in all actuality it's the person who builds those relationships has the customer service, who's consistent, who can do a good job, that wins the long game. So that's exactly what I did for 15 years, and it did not disappoint. Wow. Um, I don't know if it, it just stopped or you stopped on that on that conversation, but I went off. Okay, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, – Let's talk about your schooling. Let's talk about the Pro Fresh, Pro Fresh Barber Academy. Like, what got, what at this point made you decide to say, hey, you know, I, I, I'm ready to, you know, give back and, and, and share all the information within my school? And what do you believe is what would make the difference for people? that are coming, that saying that, hey, I want to be a barber to come to your school besides any, what is that that you, you feel like you're giving more to them than any other other barber school would? Oh, man, I lost my boy. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I know y'all, y'all, we, we trying our best. We, we definitely trying our best. So I'm going to see if I can tag him back in. I know he's been having um, Wi-Fi issues, but let me see. But I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. If you guys right. have quit, uh, so, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm back now. I don't know what that was, man. <laughs> it's going to piss me off in a minute, but. You know. But let, right. let me talk to the, yeah. the, the people that are joining. If you have you're welcome to um, leave comments and um, myself or, you know, the special guest today will, will, you know, go through and see, you know, which one that he feels like, you know, is, is a good question he want to answer. And, and, you know, that's what it's about, our interaction with each other, especially interaction with y'all. So I wanted to go back to my question about the Pro Fresh Barber College. And mm -hmm. I want that. My question was, is like, you building your school, 
you going to a school before, you know, I know it was way back then, but I know you hear a lot of a lot of barbers, a lot of students that come to you and ask you questions and have issues or have concerns or don't know where to start or how to go by doing it or, you know, the school that they're at, at is not really giving them all the information or the knowledge that they feel like they, they, they should be given. What is it about your school that you feel like it will change all that? Well, what I would say about Pro French Barber Academy is this, right? I've been to barber schools and I've worked in barber schools and most of them are beauty schools with uh, like a basement barber program. Like it's just like over there, the barbers over there, y'all just, you know, do what y'all do over there, right? And as a person who loves the barber game, me personally, I, I just feel like we deserve more. And I've been in the classroom with a lot of those with a lot of those kids. And when I've went and joined schools, I've listened to them when I first got there about the problems and the issues that they're having and things like that. Right. So that's one piece of it. The other piece is being a shop owner for so many years. I see the product that comes into my shop after they get out of school and they struggle with fundamentals as far as cutting. Now, whether that's their commitment or the teacher or the school or the schedule or the lack of reps, all of that is probably part of it, right? All, we, they, all of that is part of it. And then I notice barbers that have been in the game for a long time who come in my shop and say, I would like to get a, you know, a, a chair and this and this and that. And then they struggle. And after they've been in the game eight, nine years, they still need a lot of walk-ins and they still need a lot of growth, you know what I mean? That, that is desired. And the, the challenge for me is like, what are all of these people, whether they're in school, out of school, been in the game 10 years, what are they all missing? And I said, if I can figure out that and I can put that in a barber school, I may have something. And what I found is that barbers, number one, never really learn how to cut, right? Mm -hmm. Until 10 years later. And then when they do finally learn how to cut, they don't know how to market themselves. Yeah. Then if they do know how to cut and they market themselves and they make a bunch of money, their business structure and money management is terrible. Yeah. Right. So at Pro Fresh Barber Academy, what I am going to focus on is number one, teaching you how to cut. Number two is going to teach you how to market yourself. So you don't get out here and feel like booth rent is killing your head or you need to go to a shop where they take 50% of the commissions and make you pay for three mortgages by the time you finish working for them. <laughs> and then the last part is teach you how to manage your money so you can invest it and earn passive income. If you do not get any form of passive income in your life, you will never ever be free. I do not care what you do. You have to learn how the game of money works. You just have to. If you don't, you'll cut hair till you're 60 and then your arms and your back and your neck hurt. And then you feel like, what did I do with my life? I want you to be able to do what you want to do because you've, in, you've, you've been a barber for 10 years. You've invested all your money and now you cut because you want to. Because that's what I enjoy. I literally cut hair because I want to. I love the people. It's like the golf course for me. People come sit in my chair and we talk. I got tremendous relationships. And that is exactly why I go to the barbershop. Not because I need no money. Not because I don't need none of that. I'm, in, I'm walking away from well over six figures as a barber to go build a barber school. To some people, that's suicide. But when you do what you're supposed to do with your money, that's the freedom choice that I have to be able to go give back and make a contribution to the world. And that is what I can show people who join Pro Fresh Barber Academy. And that's what I want to do at the end of the day. I did it already. You know what I'm saying? I can I can go chill in some real estate and some other stuff and just relax at home. Yeah. But I don't. I'm 36, man, and there's more to life than just that. Some people are like, oh, I just want to make some money and chill. That would drive me crazy. I'm not a chiller. <laughs> I got to be productive. Yeah. So that that that's what I want to show people: business, finance, marketing, and cutting skills. All of that stuff will be a main focus of of the school for sure. I, I love that you said that because that's basically everything that I wanted to share with this platform. Mm -hmm. Basically, the business side. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I really want to elaborate on financial gain, 
um, leadership, marketing, mm -hmm. sales, mm -hmm. everything that you could do besides, you know, just going to the shop and, and looking for, you know, heads to sit in your chair. It's, mm -hmm. it's a plus, it's major, especially if you if you love the art. It is an art. It, it, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's beautiful, amazing to build out your canvas. And then once you're done to see that person look in the mirror and, and feel so happy and new and joyful and to walk out of there feeling like they can take on the world. Yeah. But besides that, you got to know how to, you know, fashion, financially, you know, put money aside for rainy days and, mm -hmm. and, and days where it gets slow and stuff like that. And, and not saying that I feel like it should be more of a, part of a course but I look at when I was in high school like we didn't have economics as a course it was elective so you'll yep. get at, at the final stage of your <laughs> your year of high school and and they'd be like damn I could have learned all this throughout the year of how to financially build myself once but they teach us to be workers they don't teach us yeah. how well, yeah. that a lot of that stuff right is you're exactly right right a lot of it is strategy yeah. The number one way people get rich in America mm -hmm. is off of other people's debt. Correct. So if they teach you how to get out of debt and they teach you how to manage your money, they have to work harder for their money. Correct. But if they can get you in debt, they get the most, you know I mean, they, they get money for nothing. Mm -hmm. They get money off of ignorance. And like, if you look at the United States government, right, everybody was talking about, oh, student loan forgiveness and all that. If you Google the number one income source of the United States government, it yeah. is student loan debt. Yeah. So you mean to tell me they're going to say, oh, yeah, we'll just forgive all this student loan debt or ten or $20,000. That's how they make their money. <laughs> the people making the decisions, that's how they make their money. They're right. not going to do that. It's just for votes and stuff. But I don't want to get I don't want to make this political, but. It's just no, no, very, no, man. <laughs> it's very it's very simple. It's very simple, man. And you know, I, I have put out, you know, a course uh, that I call financial fundamentals for barbers because I want to teach barbers how to be financially independent. And everybody who's taking that 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 online course is like, yo, how are you giving this away for $147? Like, this is insane. But it, it teaches you how to structure your business and learn all you need to know about finance so you can actually crush it as a barber, man. And I just don't, don't want us to speak today. I can see it. <laughs> Every time we get to that good part. I, I, I G don't I, I G don't want y'all to learn today. He they, I G don't want the, the truth to be heard. <laughs> but I, I appreciate everybody that's you know tuning in, jumping in back and forth. But uh, yeah, we gonna keep going. We gonna we gonna get this right before the day is up. Uh, let me see if I see anybody comments. Logging my boy back in. All right, there we go. Thank you, sir. Because man, I'm like, yo, I can't, <laughs> can't take this no more. I can't take more interruptions. Uh, no, I'm like, IG don't want you to speak today. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't handle it no more. Like, God, All right. So, what I, I think the last thing that you guys heard me say was about the government being the biggest. Uh, that's where they make most of their money off of debt and stuff like that. So, but I ain't want to make all this political, man. I want to stay on top. Yeah, we we got it. But we understand. We definitely understand. You know, one thing I was um, 
checking out on one of your videos that um, hit me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I definitely want to ask that question when I talk to you. When you mm -hmm. said you sometimes you got to look back on the things that you was learning in life. Mm -hmm. And and you think that process is the best process because you've been doing it the whole time. But if you look at your movements, mm -hmm. it could distract you or put you to a halt. But you still run it with that same knowledge. Sometimes you just got to re reset and relearn. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit more? Um, yeah, I, I, when I was growing up in environments, right, where like a majority of us were broke, right? So we didn't, it, it is those core beliefs that you start out with that determine how your life turns out. And unfortunately for a lot of us, we don't learn that what we take in on as beliefs are causing the results that we have. And a lot of times, like, I'll, I'll give you one for an example, right? When I was growing up, right, one of the biggest things I always heard was, you know, ain't no point in getting married. You know what I mean? Eventually, she'll leave you and take half. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you'll hear, like, oh, these women ain't shit or all this stuff, right? You just, you know, you can't trust nobody. Only trust yourself. Um, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Like a lot of these things, right? People probably are listening to me right now. Like, yo, like I've heard those before. Mm -hmm. Those are terrible beliefs. But when you're in poverty environments, you, you believe those things. But if you never trust nobody, you can never build a successful business. If you never trust anybody, you'll never get married. You know what I'm saying? Like if you get married, your, your wife bec can become a major supporter for you. It ultimately is your wise counsel that can help you stay out of problems and push you over the top. Facts. But if you look at her like she looking at like she about to steal half of everything you've gained, you'll never you'll never value her. And then when you don't value her, she's never gonna stay around. So there's just tons of things, man, that we believe that you know rich people are lucky. And it's like, come on, man, eighty over eighty percent of millionaires are first generation rich. Like, how are rich people lucky? Like, everybody ain't hitting the people don't know that like, but I'm just saying it's like these types of beliefs are what stop us yeah. you know what I mean it's like there's always somebody trying to keep me down or the bank don't want to give me no money no you have a cheesy business plan if, if you were going to loan somebody some money would you accept this no so it's like you have to think of it in all circumstances a lot of people are so mentally defeated that it's like it's impossible to grow because the beliefs that you tell yourself are 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 they bear fruit, and then you when you don't like the result, you start crying and complaining, and then it gets worse and worse and worse. And I think the only way that anybody can change it is you have to change the environment. Stop going to the club. Start going to Barnes and Nobles. Buy you a ten dollar book instead of a ten dollar shot of Patron. Yeah. And 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 change the things that you do that seem insignificant, but they're they're unbelievable stepping stones to a better life. I like that. That's dope. I'm glad that you you know I got a chance to check that out and hear you speak on that because mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, that's a number one thing. Especially. I was I was a person that was in that environment. I used to believe yeah. those things. Yeah. And then I was like, yo, why am I not getting the result I want? And I said, you know what? I'm not listening to these jokes no more. I moved away to Atlanta, Georgia, where it was just me. That's wow. another big one, too. I always tell people, move out of your hometown. Seriously. <laughs> because the people in your hometown, they've known you all your life. Uh -huh. I, the reality is a lot of them ain't going to do nothing. Uh -huh. And if you keep that circle, guess what's going to happen? You ain't You're not going to do nothing either. Uh -huh. That's the hard truth. I'm yeah. sorry, but it's it's real. Thanks. Um, this is a two-part question. Yes. So, um, now where you at and mm -hmm. i know you're still growing because life mm -hmm. is about growth um what would you tell the i uh, think you said you started at 18. uh i went to barber school at 18 yes what what would be the voice that you would give that 18 year old now what i would tell an 18 year old right now is learn as much as you can about how money works 
Because I don't care what you do. If you don't manage your money correctly, you are always going to feel like what you're doing is not worth it. We tie everything we do to how we look financially. Unfortunately, we do. It's reality. You know what I'm saying? And you could be making 100 grand a year and be broke. You could be making 200 grand a year and be broke. You could be making 50 grand a year and be broke. And the reality is until you learn how to earn money passively, you're always going to feel like you're spinning wheels because you're making money and then which you, you're ultimately going to spend it on your lifestyle, right? To some degree, unless you're willing to make sacrifices or you put other things in place that can help you generate revenue while you sleep. That is a different high. I'm telling you, when you got things that are coming in from different places that make you money while you are asleep, I promise you, you will wake up on fire and you will work harder than ever before because you're on the right track. And there's no burnout from that feeling. I yeah. promise you there's no burnout from that feeling. Yeah. Like when I got different, I had three shops and four Airbnbs and I get those notifications. Like most people wake up, they check Instagram. I wake up yeah. and check Airbnb and check Chase and Bank of America. Yeah. It's a different vibe. I promise you it's a different vibe. Yeah. No, I like that. Cause I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I'll be checking my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so the second part of that was yeah. right what you're you're speaking on, mm -hmm. and it's what I see a lot more in social media, and I think it's another another like blind side that's been trickled to a lot of barbers is that you are who you are by the amount of money you make. Mm -hmm. So you need to charge a hundred dollars a cut. You need to charge two hundred dollars a cut, but mm -hmm. it doesn't show the stages of how to right. really get there. Mm -hmm. What is the information you're sharing in your school to kids, or young men and women? Because there's a lot of women that's joining this industry as well. Mm -hmm. To how to blindside that and then focus mm -hmm. more on your craft, and eventually mm -hmm. you will get mm -hmm. to where you can charge your clients that amount of money. Yeah. First thing I want to say is people who are talking that number as far as like you need to charge this, you need to charge that. They're just doing that because they know people are going to get in the comments. They're doing that for clout. Like that's not, it's not a very real, a real thing for a lot of barbers. It's just not, you know what I'm saying? Here's what I would tell somebody, right? Go get good, right? Because good is the attracting piece. That's what's going to attract people to you, right? Keep them coming back. Quality service. A haircut is part of that. Being on time is part of that being friendly, listening to your clients, letting them vent. All of that is part of that. The environment that you're in, all of that is part of that, right? The experience, right? There's no replacing poor technical skills. I don't care how nice the shop is. If a joker walk out with a bowl and he asks for a fade, he's not coming back, right? So you got to get the haircut right. Then I would tell the average person, barber, right? You need to be in between anywhere between 30 and $50 a cut, right? Here's, here, here's why, right? I say 30 when you first start out, because depending on where you live, that might be realistic. If you're in a major city, probably 40 to 50, right? But here's what I'll say. In order to get over 50, that is about demand and marketing, how you generate new leads. Don't fall for these tricks that these barbers tell you, like charge $75 a cut. If you do not have a lead generator, where you're generating new leads at that price point, mm -hmm. you are not going to make very much money. Mm -hmm. You can go outside and pass out a card or somebody walk by the window or, you know what I mean? Some your homeboy refer you somebody at $40, they're not going to bat an eye. Right. $50, they'll probably not even bat an eye, especially if you're good, right? But when you start getting into that 60, 70, 80, $100 range, the only thing that justifies that is the supply and demand. Correct. If you have major demand and you got two, 300 clients and you cutting down to 30 heads, you got the demand. You probably can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, I wouldn't dare do that. You're going to be sitting around on your hands talking about, I want to start driving trucks because <laughs> people are not going to be coming to you. I promise you. There is a point, right, where you can scale your business and get to a higher price point. I charge $100. Mm -hmm. 
but I have crazy clientele that's been compounded over a decade. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The resume is there. The work ethic is there. All of my clients have grown to high levels with me. You know what I'm saying? I have the higher paying clients. I can't just go recruit somebody off the street and be like, yo, it's $100 a cut. Come see me. I got to have the validation. I got to have a resume. I got to be able to attract that lead. Mm-hmm. Now, I know how to do that. But if a person does not know how to do that, I do not recommend it. And and miss me with all this. You got to know your worth and all that, man. That's, that's barber talk, man. Get out of here, man. You worth what the market says it's worth. Correct. If you don't believe me, ask Target and Walmart and Publix. Target just a couple of weeks ago missed on earnings. You know why? Because more than ever, more six figure money earners is going to Walmart. Why? Because yeah. a carton of eggs can't be $10. That's why. You know what I'm saying? People are not feeling that no more, man. The money got to be there <clears throat> for a person to be able to spend that money on that. The money got to be there. So 40 to 50 is cool. 30 to 50 is cool when you're starting out. And then here's the other thing, too, right? Barbers are like, oh, man, I need to raise my price, right? Listen, I, I just want to give you some perspective. If you're $50 and you do four days a week and you cut 10 heads, that's $2,000 a week, which is almost, like, pretty much six figures, right? Mm-hmm. If you give yourself a $5 raise every year because you have the demand, if that's all you do, you gave yourself a $10,000 raise every year. Now, yeah. if you have the demand, you can do that, yeah. right? If you don't, then that just means you have work to do. But if you're doing $110,000, 120000 130000 $140,000 a year, and you still ain't got no damn money, and you're not happy, you have some serious issues. Yeah. Serious issues. Because you can live off of sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000, and the other fifty, if you invest it wisely, you'll make enough passive income that you have no need to go any higher than that. Not saying that you can't go to 100 and 150 and all that. If you know how to generate leads online and in ways with higher paying clients, then yes, you can do that. But we all know nine out of 10 people can't do that. Nine out of 10 barbers can't do it. So I'm giving you the game plan. If you can't do that, here's what you need to do. I hope that makes sense. It did. I mean, for me, it did. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, I also want to um, trickle in on, on I heard you say this multiple times, mm-hmm. and I want to know, like, if you mind sharing mm-hmm. the, the moment when you realize that I have business that I have to run, but I mm-hmm. also have a family that I need mm-hmm. to share my time with, that they know that Pops is available, Pops is here. Mm-hmm. My wife knows that husband is 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 here, she need me, but she knows that I have a layer of businesses, I have clients and stuff like that. How do you make sure that the value of both is being taken care of very well? All right, for me, it started very early, right? I knew I wanted that to be a priority. That's why I've always, you've always probably heard me online talk about my schedule, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. I either, you either got to work early in the morning or it's going to be tough. And here's why I say that. I am at work when my kids are in school. They don't miss me. You feel what I'm saying? I am the one picking my daughters up off of the bus at three o'clock. That's me. I spend the rest of the day with them pretty much daily. Now, when I was building early on and they were young, one or one or um, seven to seven, stuff like that, I did that for a couple of years. And then I scaled it back. But I always knew I wanted to get in early, six o'clock in the morning to two, which I've done the last probably 10 years. And my kids are 16, 13, and six. So I'm the one taking them to dance practice and picking them up here and taking them to the gym with me. They can go to kids club and taking them to get ice cream and all that. You have to make them a priority, but it doesn't take all day. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying if you can, if you can just make them a priority, sometimes it's a two hour movie night, just make it a priority. Sometimes it's just getting up, cooking them breakfast and sitting at the table with them. Just make them a priority. It'll never be balanced. If you feel the need to, you know what? I haven't spent no time with my family. I've been working really hard. Didn't spend time with your family. 
a, a, a wise man really told me this a long time ago when I asked him this, and I thought it made a lot of sense. I'll never forget it. So I'm going to share it with you guys. If you've ever been in a hospital, right, and you've seen the respirator machine, mm -hmm. the little green line, and it goes up and down like this, mm -hmm. he said, that's your life. If it's flat, that means it's, it's balanced. If it's flat, you also did. So it'll never be balanced. The goal is to keep that thing going up and down. So he said, work hard, work hard, work hard, spend time with family, spend time with family, work hard, spend time with family, work hard. So he was like, you'll know when you need to do that. You'll feel it in your gut. You know when you've been working too hard and you ain't spent no time. That guilt going to set in. Take a week and go spend time with them. Just them. Leave the business alone. Then you know when you've been on vacation and stuff like that with them for like a week and a half, you're like, you know what? All right, I need to go back to work. <laughs> right. Go back to work. <laughs> he was like, your life. He was like, your gut will tell you what it is, man. Just do it and listen to your heart. Don't try to balance it every day and all that and all that drama. He was like, man, don't do that. Work hard because you got to provide a future for your family. That's a priority. And he said this too. Enroll them in the vision. Let them know what you're doing. My babies know we open in the school. We got shops. Daddy's at the barbershop on Friday. On Sunday, we're going to hang out. We're going to walk the belt line. We're going to do something. We all know that. Enroll them in the vision. Let them know. Give them something to look forward to. Don't just keep them in the dark. So I hope that helps. That's dope. Um, let's go back to, um, let's talk about more about your school. Mm -hmm. um, is it, I'm, the, I'm asking. Mm -hmm. One of the key informations that you would like to make sure that when your your students leave the academy mm -hmm. um, is mostly customer service first, and then the haircut or haircut. No, nah, it'll be it'll be the technical skills first. Okay, I want to make sure you are good, but we will always be working on customer service, mm -hmm. right? Because that's easier to learn mm -hmm. than the skill set. So the skill set has to be a priority, because as I was saying. The customer service is not going to matter if you can't do the cut. Can I play devil's advocate? Yeah. Somebody might have the best, like, I would say breakdown of how to cut hair, but their mm -hmm. personality is real shy, real, like, mm -hmm. mellow, don't know how to speak, don't know how to, like, mm -hmm. build. Because that's just a – but if you sit in a chair, they can cut you up, but then the person mm -hmm. might feel like, damn, well, you know, I would like to – build a relationship with my barber, but he just not that person. And then they just be like, okay, I'm going to go to somebody else. How do you draw that out of somebody? Be like, you know, it's it's okay to be, you know, mm -hmm. I won't say vulnerable, but this the allow that perspective, you know. I always encourage each person to always get into like some form of personal development. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people say, well, this is who I am. Okay, but you can grow from that. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. This is how I've always been. Okay, but you can grow from that, right? It's like I have certain things about myself, right, that I'm like, yo, this is, just, this is who I am at the end of the day. I understand. But I also can make a conscious effort to do better in certain areas, right? So I always tell the person, like, look, man, if this is what it takes to be successful and you really want that, yeah. you will transform into that. Correct. Success leaves clues. You know what I mean? People, all the successful people, no matter what industry, they have about a handful of fundamentals that they all follow. And we hear it over and over and over again. Yeah. It just is what it is. Who can do it the, the consistent, the longest? That's what it really what it come down to. That's really what it come down to, no matter what profession. Who can do what's necessary to win the most consistent and the longest? I'm going to play devil's advocate again. So now okay. you have an academy and you mm -hmm. take kids, the fundamentals, you teach mm -hmm. them everything that they need to learn mm -hmm. and you and I both had to go and take the barber test mm -hmm. and the practical how do you feel mm -hmm. about it now that I don't know maybe you're, are, are they still doing the practical in, in, in Georgia yeah it's with mannequins though oh, okay okay because at yeah. certain locations they canceled the practical really yeah I, I had that's news to me. I didn't know. Uh, you mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's so out here we don't we don't we don't have to take the practical no more. In California. Wow. wow. Why? What's the reasoning? It's, it, they really didn't really give a reason. They cut the hours. Are, are the hours cut in your location? No, we're fifteen hundred. Yeah, the hours are cut now. 
So if you want to be a, a, a barber in California, it's a thousand dollars. And um, if you want to be, I think a co cosmetologist is 600 hours. And then if you have your barber license and you want to cross over, it's only 200 hours. No, it's 300 hours. And, but if you're a Cosmo trying to be a barber, it's, it's 200 hours. Wow. And no practical. Wow. So you just show up and get licensed now? <laughs> Interesting. So how you feel about that? <laughs> um, I just, you know what, you know what's crazy about that is it's going to make schools even more valuable. Yeah. You know why? Why? Because you're still going to have to learn the skill set at some point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Regardless of what the state say, the the market will always say you suck or you or you're good. Yeah. And if you can't if you can't do the work, then you're going to suffer. So you're going to have to go get training somewhere. And I know you can watch on YouTube, right? You can watch a, a class or whatever, but there's nothing like physical practice with somebody who knows what they're doing right in front of you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a school is the best environment for that. Correct. Where you can get reps on top of reps. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I hate to see it, but I don't, I, I just don't, I, I don't, I don't know, understand what the point is. I just don't understand it. Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about this. Um, I know for myself when I when I was in the school, and you know you're around your peers, and then you see like all the different tools, and then you just like as a student, you be like, oh, I need those, I need those, I need those. Mm -hmm. Are you teaching your students like you know stick to one clipper, stick to one trimmer, and master that, and then eventually? Yeah, during 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 Dor Dor school. Yes, I am going to do that. But when I put together the kits for the students, yeah. I'm giving them all the best stuff, oh, the stuff God. I use. I'm not. I hate. I hated that at barber school when I was there. Was like, why are you giving cheap. people these cheap <laughs> clippers, knowing they're not going to use them? They're going to go buy the other stuff anyway. Yeah. At that point, we're just wasting money. Yeah. So you wasting the school's money? Who you wasting the kids' money? The students' money? Like, just give them the best stuff, man. Like if. If it costs more, so what? Just charge more. Yeah. But don't make them go buy it twice. That's stupid. I hated that. So, yes, I'm going to give them the stuff I use, <laughs> the, the the stuff that I learn on, that I teach on. I can teach all the fundamentals. Everybody will have the same thing. Because once you learn it and you master all the fundamentals, you go pick what you want after that. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So what what is, um, how, for you, uh, when you do take your time and you're in the shop and you're cutting mm -hmm. What are tools that you're using right now that you're you're real like excited like about or is it a new tool or an old tool nah, that you I'm a, I'm a I'm a wall clippers. Okay. So the wall the wall seniors with the magic clip blade or even the magic clip and then the Andis T outliner with the cord still. Okay. <laughs> the Andis T outliner with the cord is the greatest outliner ever created. I promise you. <laughs> Ain't no clipper better than that. I promise you. It, I still use it to this day, man. I've had it for ten years. I, yeah, it's just I, I don't I don't use nothing else. Now I have like the influencer babbleless trimmer that's cordless. Mm -hmm. That got a lot of power, so I like to use that for cleanup and stuff. But my okay. lineups, I'm using that Andis T outliner, man, with the cord, no question. And then the wall, the wall senior, and the wall magic clip. Oh, and then man. and then some <laughs> Andis, um, Andis detachables. Um, but that's it, man. No, that's my five. I ain't, I ain't using nothing else. Uh, I ain't got no interest in using nothing else. I'm not. <laughs> you're not going to charge me $400 for a new clipper just because I ain't with it. Nope. <laughs> no, sir. Yeah. That's another thing I wanted to touch on because I know a lot of barbers now, especially the ones that are – and I'm not – I don't want to sit on here and make it seem like I'm going at barbers that want to charge what they're charging. You you have the right – to charge what you feel like mm -hmm. is profitable to you. You got to make mm -hmm. a living. You gotta, uh, mm -hmm. I, but I notice a lot of barbers speak on, if you want me to give you the cut that you desire, I have to go out and buy these particular, you know, clippers or, or trimmers. 
And <laughs> so if I'm paying this amount for my trimmers and, and clippers, that should trickle into what I'm charging you for a haircut. Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. I don't even want to talk about that. That's silly, man. That's a cheap, that's a, that's a cheap way to try to justify, man. Cut it out. I, I don't even want to talk about that. Next, right. question. Next question. That's cheating. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's all about the value you bring to the customer, not the tools you use. Come on, man. No, no. Let's talk about um because you you spoke on it, and I, I I'm sorry I should have paid attention a little bit more, mm -hmm. but um you're you say you sell content, so speak on. Yeah, I have I. I I have a, a course that I call Financial Fundamentals, and it's for barbers, designed specifically for barbers. It's everything I learned in, in, in finance and how I operate a business to be debt-free and be able to buy real estate and maintain shops and, and just live comfortable, man. And basically, I could retire at 36. So people always ask me, like, Will, how do you do all this stuff? And I'm like, listen, man, it's like 40 videos, 35 videos, something like that where I walk you through step by step how to do exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. um, they're all professionally recorded. They're, it, the information is priceless. Now, I'm not a person that I like to get online and be like, oh, you should buy this course, buy this course. Like, I, I hate like constantly trying to sell somebody something. So oftentimes what I do is when people get close to me, they talk to me, they ask me for advice. Those are the people who get that type of information because they're seeking it and they want it, right? When you seek, you shall find. So I always give it to those people. And then it's the stuff I try to teach my team members. You know what I mean? But I do need to launch it out to the world because it's incredibly valuable. But I just hate constantly trying to sell somebody something. So if people want the game, when they ask me, they get it. Okay. If they, if they don't ask, I ain't shoving it down your throat. So that's probably a flaw on my part. But, I mean, like I said, make, man, I make sure you send me the link. And when I um, <laughs> when I chop up our video and put yeah. the video out, I'll, I'll definitely place that on there, and people for, can, for sure. Yeah. I also have other ones for beginner barbers too, like all of my fading tutorials and simplified systems. That one, I, I I let that one go. It's like fifty bucks or something like that, but it's got twelve tutorials with step by step, um, just instruction on how to learn how to cut. Because what I found is, like, people are always tagging me and stuff, right? Where some of my YouTube videos are at their school. And they're watching it online in class. And I'm like, yo, come on. Now, like, all these videos y'all just putting up there. Like, I'm teaching class today. And I ain't even at that school. So I have more in-depth ones and different ones for, like, $47. There's, like, 10 of them that a person can easily get, you know, if they, if they like the way I teach, you know, all, all the fundamentals. Nice. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to speak on um, the the proper way of like expanding your business. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you find the point to like structure everything? Like, I know for say like myself, mm -hmm. I, I I first started. I, I was doing uh, fashion. That's where I came from. And then people always told me, like, oh, you ever thought about cutting hair and getting in the hair business and, you know, maybe um, thinking about working on set. You know, that's what the things that they were, you know, speaking to me about. But I was mm -hmm. always in love with fashion. And then later on, once I got to a point in my job where I got laid off and then I tried to, like, really, like, go at it hard as I could with my, with my brand, mm -hmm. it was – was doing well, but it wasn't well enough for me to make a, a great living. And then my wife, my lady at that time, my wife now was like, she brought it up. It was just funny out of the blue. She was like, you ever thought about being a barber? So I got into the barber game, COVID hit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also another thing I want to talk to you about. COVID hit, whatever. I made it through, mm -hmm. became a barber. But sometimes mm -hmm. I find myself trying to do still like my clothing, do the barbering. Mm -hmm. do this platform do mm -hmm. how did you come to a point where you say okay i just want to focus on one thing once that thing works i'm gonna build my tree and watch everything else grow okay so i always tell people my core of my entire business is me behind the chair that is my core 
I remember a couple years ago, every barber was like, get from behind the chair, get from behind the chair, and now they're all back. That, that Still to this day, me being behind the chair is the fastest way I know how to print one. All I got to do is go there, turn the lights on, and the money machine prints. I don't have to turn it off. So I'm never going to turn it off. And then once I got my finances all the way in order, got out of debt, and I saved up money, I started investing in real estate and stocks to create the force field around my family that not many things can get through because I can just write a check and it'll go away. So once I got free where my cost of living, I kept my bills low to where my passive income could take care of my bills. Now I am free to invest in other things because I don't have to work as many days. I can work two days. I got five days to go build something else. Correct. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm just a big proponent of shop ownership because oh. you're providing opportunity for other people and you get to make money while you're not there. Correct. Some people say, I don't want to deal with people. I would rather be solo in a suite by myself. And that's fine, right? <clears throat> but here's my problem with that. One is too small of a number to do anything great. Nobody can reach greatness by themselves. You can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So, and you can't create any passive income like that. So it's a dead end. Like it may stroke your ego. You may put your logo on the wall. But if you don't have any passive streams coming in, it's, it's, it's going to be a headache when you get 50. You're going to sit back and look like, dang, because all you did was work for years. You know what I'm saying? You never created any passive streams. And I just think it shows the ignorance financially when barbers go do that. Because what they think is, well, if I'm in a private space, I can charge more money. No, that doesn't guarantee that. You have to be able to generate leads. And if you can generate leads at a shop versus that, why would you do that? You know what I'm saying? It just now, I do understand when people were like, yo, the environments, the barbershop environments I was in were toxic. And I had to control the environment. I understand that. But what I tell people is like, yo, don't run from a toxic environment. Just go open up your own. That way you have other streams. It's like, I would never isolate myself from the market. That's just not smart business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah. you, you, you never want to isolate yourself from the market. You know what I mean? Because then you're the one in control of your income all the time. I would much rather have other things paying my bills than me paying them. <laughs> from a financial perspective and a business perspective, that makes sense. Yeah. I think barbers, I think we make mistakes when we run from problems and we try to get away. No, go fix it. I was in a toxic barbershop environment. I said, I'm going to open up my own shop so I can help the next man and control my future. That makes sense. So a lot of times when barbers be like, I don't want to deal with people. Well, why are you a barber? You're going to deal with people. Right. Clients, barbers, the same thing. Yeah. Our mentality is so messed up from finance to all we know is how to create dope art. That's all we know how to do. A majority of us, I'm, I'm just gonna keep it real. A majority of us can do a hell of a haircut. We can grab the camera, we can get on Instagram, we can create dope content. But I don't know if we all can get to a real check, man, because we don't really understand how the money work. We're conditioned on art and graphic, which is cool. Right. But if you wanna really get paid, man, because when you get paid, you get to buy back your time. So we have barbers like, oh, I work all this, I work all this, I want my time back. We'll create you some revenue then. If you create other streams of revenue, you can buy your time back. Right. So, man, you was you were talking that shit today, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's very unpopular, man. A lot of barbers get mad at me when I talk like that, but I'm just telling the truth, man. There's no greater feeling, right, than helping the next man. If you're a barber and you help the person get a, a fly cut, it makes you feel good, right? But if you want to send that on steroids and you build you a barbershop and you help 10 barbers create six figures, that feels even better. Ask me how I know I've done it. Then if you want to really get to it and you go build a school and you start changing people's generations, you start taking young people and giving them a trade before they go get $100,000 in debt in college, that feels even better. When you can go and start buying real estate that you can pass down to your kids, 
that feels even better. When you can create passive income, so when your wife says she want to take a vacation, you ain't talking about, you know, we got to go on Monday and Tuesday because we can't take off the weekend because I got to go to work. That feels even better. So all I'm trying to tell people is like, yo, if you really want to get to it, this is the formula. All that other stuff, man, is hustling backwards in my opinion. Uh, man, it is so much more I want to ask you and really chop it over. Because <laughs> I feel like we got to do a, a part two of this, man. Seriously. Seriously, man. Like, when you can make over a couple hundred thousand dollars without waking up off of barbering, yeah. that should wake you up. For sure. Yeah. And I know plenty of barbers. A lot of them are my guys, man. I got love for them. But isolating yourself into a suite is a dead end. I'm, I'm you're glad running, you're you running straight into a dead end, man. Yeah. Ain't that many online courses and mentorship programs and all that. Ain't ain't that many of that. And at the end of the day, guess what? If you're but, still doing that, if you're still doing that, you got to keep mentoring. So you still got to do the work. You know what say, I'm saying? I, I like what you shared when you was like, okay, if you're in a toxic place, open up your own spot. Yes. But what, what if you're not at the part where you can open up your own spot? Then you're trying to find another spot, but then well, people. Well, watch. well, here, here, here's the thing. Yeah. If I, I will go to another barbershop, and here's why I would do that because. But do you want to be known as the barber that keeps bouncing around every time you? No, feel like do, do, you, do your homework. On, do your homework on the front end. Do your homework okay. on the front end. Mm -hmm. There are barbershops that you can find in your area that aren't toxic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So because here, here's here's the thing, right? I always tell people. You can teach what you know, but you reproduce what you are. So if you go in, if you go from a barbershop and you say, you know what, it's toxic here. I don't want this. I'm going to go get a suite. When you try to come out of that, everybody's going to be like, yo, well, you went by yourself. Why should I come with you now? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you was in a barbershop and you opened up your own barbershop, you believe in that model. Mm -hmm. See, when you deal with people, you transfer belief. You can't go into a suite for five years and then say, yo, I'm opening a shop. You should go work here. People are like, well, you was in a suite forever. Why don't I just go do that? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like belief, belief is what's transferred. You can't fake belief. Yeah. You can't fake belief. Like, you can say it all day long. I talk barbershop because I believe in it. Mm -hmm. I've been successful at it. Mm -hmm. It works. My shops are full. I, 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 you know what I mean? I don't, now there's been barbers who left and got sweets. And then there's some of them who've left and came back. There's some of them who've left and left the industry as a whole. There's some who've left and opened up their own shop. I've had two guys work at my shop and then open up their own. All of the above is possible. <clears throat> All of the above is possible. But if you want the passive income, which is what everybody in the world wants, even if they don't know it yet, a sweet not going to get you that. You know what I mean? And that's that's my only argument. Like, I don't hate people who do that. I just think that when you do that, it's a dead end, man. And, and guess what? Like like Rick Ross said, we're going to see who's who 10 years from now. We're going to see. We're going to see. You know what I mean? We're going we to see. You know what I mean? I, I will argue with anybody about that, man. And then what I don't like is, here's the thing. When the new barber gets out of school, if all of the top barbers <laughs> go get sweets, yeah. right? Where yeah. do they go? Go ahead. I learned this from the Atlanta Braves, and I'll never forget it. I was talking to their fundraising department, and the lady said, Will, the Braves spend a million dollars a year on one thing, right? And I was like, what is that? And she was like, this is the most important thing that they do. And I was like, what is it? Getting the next generation interested in baseball. Okay. Because if they get the next generation interested in baseball, their future is secure. Okay. If people aren't interested in baseball, the Braves and the baseball brand and all that is going to drop because people start doing something else. So for me, building my business, I'm like, well, let me go open up a school. So guess what I can do? Get the next generation interested in barbering. Show them what's possible. Because guess what? 
if more people join a barber school and get licensed and get legit and know how to cut, guess what they need to do? They need to go somewhere and, and, and build a clientele. And guess where that's at? At barbershops that I own. It's just business. This stuff isn't personal. It's business. And then it's like, okay, you can you want to learn barbering, where you want to go? Do you want to go to the best barber school? Or is that a beauty school with a basement barber program? Is that learning from the guy down the street? Is that being an apprentice under somebody who may never let you get their license because they want to keep your rent money? Or is you going to go to a barber school that's created by a barber who's had success in the industry? Which one are you going to do? See, all this stuff is strategy, and it's just I, I, I make you an irresistible offer that you can't refuse. If I told you right now, and you said, Will, man, I want to be a barber. You think I should do it? I said, yes. Mm. All right, what you think I should do? Go to barber school. Mm. Pro Fresh Academy. Cool. I go there and learn how to cut hair. Now what should I do? You should find you a great shop to work in that's already established that has strong leadership. Professional cuts. Okay, cool. You go there. I teach you how to make six figures. You make six figures. I teach you how to save your money, put you in management. Teach you how to lead other people. Okay, cool. Now, Will, what should I do? Go get your own. Or I can franchise you this. Which one you want? I give you an offer you can't refuse. I can take you from never knowing how to cut. It just being an idea. Teach you how to cut. Get your license. Understand finance, marketing, business. Put you in a shop that's established so you can build a six-figure clientele and then help you get your own shop. How do you get away from that? You can. And I'm, and I'm, not, and I'm, and I'm not manipulating you. I'm yeah. solving your problems yeah. with real gain. Really? So that's what, I, that's what I tell people. I focus on the people. What do they need? I ain't worried about me. I'm good already. Yeah. If I was only worried about me, I'd charge $100 a cut, work five days a week, buy some nice clothes, take a bunch of photo shoots, and be like, look, I'm dope. I don't care about that. I don't <laughs> give a damn about that. I'm spending my money on helping the people making a difference. Thanks. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm truly honored. Uh, I want to tell you that what you shared today was not unheard. Uh, I'm a repost. I always repost my videos. I always share my videos. I always put them mm -hmm. on my platform. Like you said, there's people that be asking me and want to know where they can find my videos, um, how they can share it in, in schools. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, definitely I'm going to let them know they definitely got to check this one out because it's... <laughs> You, you shared a lot of key information. Um, I want you to have the floor right now. I want you mm -hmm. to shout out your, your locations. I want to shout out mm -hmm. your school. I want you to shout out your staff. That, you know, every Whatever you want to do right now, the floor is yours right now. Got you. So for those of you just tuning in or didn't know, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. We got multiple locations in Atlanta. And we're opening Pro Fresh Barber Academy in like two weeks this week wednesday we're getting the final fire inspection and then we got to get the building um inspection and it literally will be done next week um and then i'm just kind of deciding whether i want the first day to be in january after the holidays or i want to start right away so i'm i'm indecided on that because i may just want to wait till january and then you know make sure everything is like super tight and super fly or i could just start like i normally do and just move forward um, so if you want to apply for Pro Fresh Barber Academy, go to ProFreshBarberAcademy.com. You can click the tour to school. You can apply. I'll contact you back. And to be totally honest, right now we have 30 applications already, which is absolutely insane. I posted one video about it being almost done, and we got like 10 new applications in like a couple hours. So it is, it, it's going to sell out. Um, it's my biggest project to date and I'm super passionate about it and it's going to get better every single day. So if you can't start on day one, you're probably not missing anything other than it's day one because it'll get better every single day. You have my word on that. Um, and I just want to help barbers succeed. So it does not matter where you are in your journey. If you're not in Atlanta, Georgia, obviously coming to the school may not be realistic for you, right? So if that's the case, you can go online to willstam.com or click the links in my in my Instagram profile. And I have resources out there for you to help you learn how to fade and line up better and, and do straight haircuts or 
if you want to get legit in business, my financial fundamentals course, just grab that. It will give you all of the game. And the reason why I love it for videos, because I'm really, really busy. If people call me, I got so much to do. I'm going to be the one in the classroom teaching because I just love the game that much. Oh, wow. But if it's on video, you can watch it over and over again. You can brainwash yourself with the information. And then it becomes a part of you. And then you go build. So just grab those things, man. I promise you, if you don't like it, I will give you your money back. That's how, that's how, that's my personal guarantee. If you come get a haircut from me and you don't like it, I give you your money back. <laughs> if you come to the school and you don't like it, I will give you your money back. Like, I'm not putting no stuff out to try to get your money. I don't care about that. I'm, I'm going to be straight anyway because I know what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, I put all this stuff out to help you, whether I'm in the same city as you or not in the same city as you. And then you can follow those pages as well, Pro Fresh Cuts for the barbershop. You can follow Pro Fresh Barber Academy on Instagram to see all the stuff that we're doing at the school. I'll probably be doing live webinars and stuff that people can join. And at the end of the day, man, I'm a barber's barber, and I want to help barbers succeed. If you've seen the levels of success I've been able to create, before I turned 35, you would at least listen to me for a couple minutes. Go get that information, apply it, ask me questions. Anytime I go live, it's a free consultation. So I love you and I just want you to win. I don't want nothing from you. I just want you to win. Because if you win, the world is a better place. Because you yeah. can start giving away money, you can start serving, you'll be happier. You know what I mean? You'll, you'll value your wife and kids. You won't blame people for stuff. I'm telling you, man, money can solve a lot of your problems. Money's not a bad thing. You see people get online all the time now and start focusing on the money. Listen, I'm not telling you to put money over people, but money can solve 95% of your problems. I guarantee it. Right. <laughs> Big buck. It just is what it is. Yeah. Uh, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> It was an honor. So, Thank you. I, love, I love y'all for free, man. I, I come on and do this stuff all the time, man. It ain't, it ain't no thing. Yeah, we we go we gonna definitely do a part two of this. All right, cool, man. All right, man. Have a great one, you and your family. You blessed, man. Thank you uh, so much again, and we'll chop it up soon. All, all right, man. Thank you for having me, man. Great questions. Thank you, man. Peace. Bye.